funky monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, it's no secret that I have loved the Marvel Cinematic Universe ever since the very first moment that Robert Downey Stark first donned a crude suit of armour to escape from a cave in the Middle East. And while the DC Cinematic Universe hasn't been as ridiculously successful, it still holds a special place in my heart. But we'll talk more about that closer to the end of the series. Today, though, I'd like to focus on a hero of a different shade. Released in 2008, Hancock is a superhero movie outside of the Big Two. Will Smith plays an amnesiac alcoholic hero who isn't actually all that popular until a PR specialist makes a few tweaks to his image. But when the PR man's wife relates a secret of their shared heritage to Hancock, everything changes. Scoring a dismal 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, is this movie an ode to a super jerk or a misunderstood hero at rock bottom? There's only one way to find out. But first, the first watch disclaimer. Yes, this is the first time that I've seen this movie and I'm watching the theatrical cut, not the extended cut. But with all that said, come with me, faithful viewers, as we uncover the secret of... Hancock! Meet John Hancock. He's no hero. What do you want, a cookie? Down on my face. But he is super. Super talented at causing more problems than he solves. Hancock. Strange visitor from this very world. Who is he? What is he? Where did he come from? And why does he drink so much? Ah, all will be revealed in good time. Except for the drinking part. That's because he's lonely. He thinks that he doesn't have a friend in the world. He soon will. And it'll make all of the difference. Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Meet Ray Embry. Now, Ray's pushing an all heart brand. You know, it's all like a big heart logo with like a circle around it or something. It's gonna be the next big thing in charitable giving, or so he thinks. And all that a company has to do is give away a product or service for free. Which, of course, in corporate America, goes down like a lead balloon. Yeah, corporate America doesn't like free. It don't make the world go round. He's about to get a face full of train. Until Hancock intervenes. <laughs> a grateful Ray senses an opportunity. Thank you very much, Hancock. After a decidedly uncomfortable spaghetti dinner, Embry offers to rescue Hancock from his own problems. And when a warrant is issued for Hancock's arrest, on Ray's advice, Hancock turns himself in. You deserve better from me, I can be better. I will be better. All right. But our hero is ill-equipped for prison life. And I'll spare you the human caterpillar that Hancock makes of two prisoners who sass him. For which you are most welcome. Or self-examination. Uh, Hancock and... Uh... I drank and stuff. People didn't really miss Hancock. They didn't appreciate Hancock. You know, you got a dude with superpowers, but he's kind of a jerk. And he's kind of always drunk. Sleeping on benches. Not really doing very much with his life. The plan was then for Hancock to give himself up, spend a few weeks behind bars while the crime rate went squiffy in his absence. Upon his glorious return, he would liaise with the authorities, and people would love him. Does it work? See for yourself. The moment he's been waiting for eventually comes. And the new Hancock makes his debut. Actually goes flawlessly. <laughs> All of which brings us to the movie's halfway point. Join us after the break as we introduce this movie's third protagonist, 
Don't touch that dial! Do you want to see new episodes two weeks early? Sign up now at the link in the description to watch your humble host discover the lunacy that is Life Force. Or check out last week's episode where our humble host got a clue. And if you're watching this on Patreon Early Access right now, thanks for your subscription and we hope not to disappoint. That night, Ray treats Hancock to a celebratory dinner. And as promised, allow me to introduce to you Mary Embry, Ray's second wife. The first one died in childbirth. What a surprise. But anyway, Mary is also a powered individual. But she's been living under the radar. You know, she doesn't want all that uh, madness and badness that Hancock gets. Hancock and Mary meet up. It doesn't go well. I'm sorry. But in a routine encounter, Hancock is actually wounded. And Mary reveals to Hancock the history he's forgotten. For you see, faithful viewer, since time immemorial, angels have walked the earth. However, they were meant to pair up and become mortal. Hancock and Mary are the last remaining pair. For thousands of years, the fates have fought to separate them, and finally succeeded in the early part of the 20th century, around about the time when the first Frankenstein movie was playing in cinemas. When Hancock was struck about the back of the head, he received a dose of amnesia, and did not know Mary when she came to claim him. And since that day, he's been alone. It's no life. But a trio of escaped cons are out for revenge. And just when all looks lost, we are reminded that you don't need to be super to be a hero. Ooh, nasty? Well, not really, because he was the villain and all. Though I do feel that this whole subplot about villains getting out and trying to get revenge on Hancock was shoved in at the last minute just to make an action climax for the movie. But shock! Hancock lives! And so our movie ends one month later, with Hancock's parting gift. Well, that's one way to call attention to your brand. But anyway, that was Hancock. But truthfully, I don't think that I can put this one into my house of love. This is a different kind of superhero movie. Mostly because the man himself isn't your ordinary superhero. There's a fascinating lore to Hancock and Mary's people, who either protected humanity or were progenitors of mankind, but we just don't know, because none of it is told to us. All we get is the reveal that there were once a race of gods or angels or what have you, far stronger than man, and now there's just two. I would have loved to know more about them. Will Smith is... Well, Will Smith. His freshness delivers another solid performance. Self-confident, invulnerable, unflappable. Charlize Theron vacillates between guarded and emotional, never really showing much tenderness until her final reveal with Hancock. Though of course, that's only because Mary knows what happens when immortals pair up. Jason Bateman's Ray, an enthusiastic PR man who tries to save a jerkish supertype from his own jerkishness, He's actually much more genuine as a character than I'd expect a PR person to be. But maybe that's just my own expectation of the soulless PR man. The flow of the movie is simple enough. Strange amnesiac holdover from prehistory tries to do right, isn't very good at it, gets some tips on engaging with the public, becomes a better man. And then discovers another like him that might actually be his soulmate, 
but them coming together will lead them both to become mortals and bring their eternity to a fateful end. I kind of feel that the first half of the story had so much more potential, as Hancock could have learned to interact with people, to become a more rounded individual, to become the hero that he was trying to be, instead of immediately turning into the hero that he was trying to be. Perhaps it could have been more like uh, the Shawshank Redemption, but with a Marvel-esque third act. But there's far too much, and paradoxically too little, in the Svelte runtime, weighing in as it does at 93 minutes plus credits, and emotional moments get squashed in favour of comedy fights, and super jerk behaviours that a certain Kryptonian would never condone. There is, though, plenty to love about this movie. If you've been jonesing for your fix of the big wheel, he's right here, and in tight leather too. The effects are flawless, making you believe once again that a man can fly. And director Peter Berg, who would go on to direct the criminally underrated, not least by myself, Battleship, is not the weak link here. No, the weak link here is the rewritten script. Scrimping on the last angels of the world and their ultimate fate, in favour of a story that will be told much better, in my own opinion, over the creation of the new DC Cinematic Universe. Or maybe even in the extended cut. But hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then I'd ask you to consider the subscription button and the notification bell. Or if you want to be extra awesome, one of the e-begging links below. Anyway, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you better days and better movies. So long, folks.